Hello YouTube, and welcome to this second microscopy video. Now, what do you think we are looking at here? Well, it's plainly very beautiful, and it is part of the human body, but I'm going to leave that a mystery for now. So, take your best guess as to what you think you're seeing here. Looks like a piece of art, but it's really just some cells stained with pigment under the microscope. So, for a reference, here we see the letters S-E-C with a period at the end. This is a font approximately somewhere between an 8 and a 10. I'm not 100% sure, but that is my best guess. So here's the period at the end of a sentence under our highest magnification. Here we go. Our first tissue is simple cuboidal epithelium, but this is clearly a kidney organ. Here we can see the adrenal gland at the top. Now this kidney organ is really quite beautiful and mesmerizing to look at. Here we're zooming in a tiny bit. All around the outer edge here, we can see the outer cortex, the real functional area of the kidney. Now the kidney's job is to filter our blood. It doesn't really pull out toxins, but it gets rid of urea and uric acid, as well as a few other things. Now kidneys have to reabsorb water and electrolytes and many important things as they form urine because the initial filtration process is passive. It simply pulls almost everything out. And then using energy, our bodies recollect the things that are important, meanwhile getting rid of the waste. Here we zoom in on the middle area here. This is close to what's called the renal pelvis, just to take a closer look at some of the tissue. Now here we can see what are called columnal cells, and they get that name because they're shaped like a column. Now I'm actually not entirely sure what exactly the function of these cuboidal cells in this part of the kidney is, but in any case, they're pretty awesome to look at. As we move around, we can see that is the renal vein, I believe, in the middle. Now as we transition to this outer cortex, you can see that there is a sort of lighter pink scribble of cells surrounded by a much darker purple cortex of cells. And we're gonna pause the, we're gonna do a, uh, a freeze frame here in a moment to highlight that. Now, this is what's called a nephron. I'm gonna put a diagram of a nephron to show you a little more clearly what's going on here. But we have, for example, a proximal convoluted tubule and a distal convoluted tubule, a loop of Henle, and a few other things here. This is where all of that filtration that I was talking about earlier takes place, inside this matrix of cells. And it's also where we find the simple cuboidal epithelium. It's what makes up the walls of this sort of pink layer. If we zoom in, if you focus more on the pink region, let's get that into focus here, you can see that all of the cells are, well, they're kind of cube-shaped, right? And that's why they're called cuboidal epithelium. The simple part of that means that there's only one layer of them. Multiple layers would mean stratified. Now here we have simple columnar epithelium, the column-shaped cells, similar to what we saw earlier in the kidney. I believe what we are looking at here is a section of small intestine, but this might as well just be a piece of art. I would hang a picture of this on my wall. Now if we zoom in closer, what I believe to be the columnar epithelium here are all of the cells, most of which contain sort of a white circle inside of them. Now what goes on with these is they absorb material. We can see to the right of the columnar epithelial tissue 
It's very rich with blood vessels, and in a little bit we're going to go over and focus on those. Now in this region, we can clearly see it is very vascular, many blood vessels and many red blood cells inside of them. The region we were looking at previously, that would be the interior, the inside of the tube that is your small intestine. Now we have stratified columnar tissue. Stratified columnar epithelium is very rare in the body. It does not occur in many places. And I have to confess that I actually don't know what it is we're looking at. This particular slide is so full of different kinds of tissues, much of it representing a mangrove forest to me, that it's really hard to tell exactly what's going on here. After doing some looking online, my best guess as to what we are looking at is that this is a salivary gland. But like I said, there's just so much going on that I let the camera just simply pan around and take a look at this slide because there's just so many different regions of it. Here we can see some blood vessels mixed within there. It was hard to pick a spot where I should focus, but ultimately I decided to pick a region that was fairly dense with this purple tissue to take a closer look at. And here that is. Again, it's very hard to know exactly what we are looking at here. So I just simply let the microscope and my phone do some exploring and some close-up looking to see what there is. So for a little while here, let's just be quiet and appreciate the beauty of what we're looking at. After some more digging and searching around, I think this is where the actual columnar tissue is located. So zooming in here, this was the closest thing I could find to that columnar tissue. Now we have the human colon. So these purple masses of cells, that would be the inside of the colon. The colon is just another word for the large intestine as a whole. We tend to think of the colon as the distal end of your large intestine, otherwise known as the anus, but that really isn't the case. The colon is just simply another way of saying the large intestine in general. The large intestine's main function, pretty much its only function, is to absorb water from feces because you are made mostly of water, it is a precious resource, and we don't want to be losing that. Now here we have elastic tissue. This is extremely dense and it's very uniform all throughout. Now pure elastic tissue occurs in a few places in the body. For example, it's mixed in with smooth muscle cells in our arteries to allow them to stretch. There's a lot of blood pressure in your arteries. In fact, when you feel your pulse, you're feeling your artery stretch open with the force of blood flowing through it, and then it contracts back to its resting position. So once again, I have to confess that I'm not really sure what part of the body this elastic tissue represents, but in any case, it's there for us to look at.
and now we have glandular epithelium. We looked at glands in the very first of these videos. This dark purple region is really the functional part of this gland, whatever gland we happen to be looking at. And in this case, we have an exocrine gland. Exocrine glands, like any other glands, produce hormones. And as the cells of the gland produce that hormone in exocrine glands, they dump their product, those hormones, into small tubes, which then connect to the circulatory system. And in each of these really amazing looking circles here, we can see the inner tube, the conduit to which those products are dumped into. Now to me, this is really beautiful. To me, this almost looks like if an impressionist such as Van Gogh were to paint flowers. Here is our mystery photo from the beginning. Pigmented epithelium, which is just simply another way of saying, this is your skin that we are looking at. The darker outside portion is where the darker pigment resides. So the stain that is used on these slides reaches a much deeper color when it mixes with those cells. Now this is transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium, which really makes up the center part here, is where we have different types of epithelial cells, squamous and cuboidal, mixed together. Again, this kind of tissue is not very common throughout the body. What I believe we are looking at here is the bladder of some sort of animal. Now what leads me to think that it is the bladder is the fact that this empty cavity in here has many twists and turns, and it's clearly set up in a way that would allow it to expand. And that's what the bladder does. It contracts greatly when it's empty, and then it expands. Now we have simple squamous epithelium. Again, I'm really not sure what part of the body we are looking at here, Simple squamous epithelium can be found in the lungs around the alveoli, but that can't be what we are looking at here because there would be many, many, many open gaps. It's also found in the kidney, but this is not the kidney because it looks vastly different from the kidney. Now around this central structure we see here with the gap around it, that is where we would find the simple squamous tissue. And here we see stratified squamous epithelium in the human body. You find this on your skin as well. Your skin has to be very tough, so it'll have multiple layers of this stuff. But we are lacking pigment here. I believe what we are looking at here is most likely the esophagus or part of the throat. Because we have multiple cells on the inner portion, which we are taking a close look at now, but the cells are mostly empty they're probably not producing any product. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more.